session of the um, research festival for the Institute of Digital Futures. I'm Abdul Satka, I'm the director of the IDF. Today, we're just going to show you some of the activities that run within the Institute and the aligned research centers. Um, both the morning and the afternoon sessions will give you a different uh, perspective on the um, activities that are currently running in our labs. Uh, the morning more dedicated to presentations covering projects, while the afternoon is about demos from the labs, live demos from the lab, and two keynotes in between. So just give you a very quick snapshot of the interdisciplinary activities within the Institute over the last period of review on the grant applications and awards portfolio. We're doing well, we could do, of course, better, and this is the purpose of having the Institute in place anyway. So according to quarter two data, um, 11.6 million worth of uh, research grant applications were submitted, out of which we've generated 2.2 million worth of grant money. And this is only applications which are uh, associated with the digital priority challenges. Now, some other applications and awards may have won uh, without them being aligned to priority challenges as such. So uh, according to statistics from um, RSTO, it's only 50% of the grant applications are aligned with digital priority challenges. So th that's quite good. Um, I'll give you just one example of how interdisciplinary these, these applications are. For instance, in the digital field, the digital sphere, one application was made um, not too far ago um, going to ESRC, which is not a traditional um, funding council that people working in the uh, technology sector do, do a bid for, that's Economic and Social Research Council, is the Network Plus scheme, which we've targeted. It's uh, a, an application prepared with 14 other universities and a number of international partners as well, to the tune of 3.6 million worth of asking money. Um, it's on people-centered intelligence and digital design the outcome of which is yet to be decided on this. Um, interdisciplinary output, uh, we've seen this work has attracted really a lot of media attention. Um, it's joint work with Leicester, Queen Mary and a couple of top Chinese universities on detecting depression on the Twitter platform. Um, it has generated a paper of the highest quality, IEEE transactions on effective computing, um, it has um, generated a podcast and an interview with a Swiss radio as well. Very, very exciting work. Uh, it has been trialed on social media uh, user groups, including journalists, scientific researchers, but also the general public. Um, doctoral research, we've got a couple of ongoing doctoral uh, projects like this one here, which is on diagnostics. Um, using medical images for respiratory illnesses. So you see the, um, the work here trying to identify where the pleural line in a chest image is, which is the line uh, that you see in, um, in blue there. It's quite an important feature in the diagnostics of uh, respiratory illnesses. So detecting it uh, using AI is very important, and this is what the work has been doing so far with the use of hidden microwave model, but also Viterbi algorithm for predicting the linearity of the structure. Another work here on the combination of multi-sensory uh, data, data fusion. We've used two, um, two sensors, namely LIDAR, a laser sensor, but also a normal RGB sensor of a camera. Um, the purpose is really to generate uh, cloud points. These cloud points are used to determine the depth uh, measurements um, in, in a certain environment. Uh, you see here in the scene one and also in scene two. These has, have been prepared using the cloud points generated from the fusion algorithm. And then that, uh, the, the video has been prepared using um, different viewpoints within, within the cloud. Um, it's basically just a single image what you're seeing, but you're seeing animated because it's looked at from different viewpoints. But this is the result of fusing two, um, two different modalities coming from two different sensors. OK, um, another couple of doctoral position, positions currently available. Uh, they are in at advert stage, um, and all these positions are supervised by colleagues from across two or more colleges. 
not departments, but colleges even. Uh, so mixed reality production is one position um, and digital twins um, is, is another and they have gone through a competitive process, internal competitive process, and the winning proposal has, has got this position uh, awarded. Um, another activity for IDF is its influence on the EU research agenda through its uh, position on the, um, the steering board of the NEM dig, um, technology platform. The, in the last uh, agenda, the strategic research and innovation agenda um, that has been produced by the NEM platform, IDF has contributed three different topics. You see them highlighted in yellow, MulSense, light field, and media searchability. And this document was shared with the European Commission DG Connect Directorate in order to help influence the upcoming uh, work program of the Horizon Europe framework. That's namely work program 23-24. So we're quite active in shaping European research agendas um, in digital in digital field as well. Uh, last thing, this is the first the first time I ever announced this, which is seed corn funding that the institute will be introducing as of next academic year. It's mainly targeted to for pump, pump priming activities. So what will happen is that we'll issue calls for proposals internally. Uh, during the academic year at various points in the in the year and funding will be awarded to pilot pilot research projects and scoping work which can cover things like um, feasibility study preliminary interdisciplinary work developing ideas which can transform into potentially into grant applications large grant applications but also for setting up consortia and the good news is that this will enable the engagement of doctoral researchers through the job shop. So there will be funding available to fund uh, doctoral researchers through this mechanism. That's all from me, very, very quick snapshot. I think I'm straight move to the next uh, presentation. I'll stop sharing here and ask Joy and David if you're around. Yes, we're around. Are you around, Joy? I am. Yes, hi. Do you want to start, Joy? Um, you go, you go. Uh, OK, um. well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'd I'd like you to welcome welcome you to this talk from myself and Joy. It's it's quite a short talk, primarily because we have both just taken over uh, this centre and we're currently sort of getting our ideas together and uh, thinking about sort of future strategies uh, for the group. Uh, so STAR is the name of the, the research group and it stands for Smart Technology Advancement for Health and Rehabilitation. So what do we what do we do? I think when you know all those those topics are quite wide ranging, aren't they? And but I think we sort of ground it in this idea that uh, these smart technologies, they're either embedded within interventions, so devices or, or systems, or they're augmenting. So they're sitting alongside a health intervention and the health intervention could be digital or it could be a device of some kind. Uh, we, we have sort of two areas that we're, we're really interested in is this sort of big and small data analysis in healthcare and then state of the art experimental approaches and computational techniques. So this, this, these can be very much uh, in the lab experiments with uh, devices as you, as you see there or, or apps, but also, also more traditional AI computational techniques. Do you want to cover the last two, Joy? Because I'm yeah, I'm yeah. So um, we have um, lots of or well, quite diverse uh, research portfolio at the moment. Um, it's very multidisciplinary. Um, there's very much an applied health focus. Um, so, for instance, some of the examples of research projects that are ongoing, um, like one, we have an NHR funded project on singing for lung health. Um, which might not seem at first sight to be much to do with smart technology, but um, it's all to do with looking at how people interact uh, remotely online, which has been 
very uh, important during the COVID crisis. And this particular project is looking at how just using a simple intervention like properly taught singing techniques can improve respiratory health for those with chronic lung disease. Um, and also we've had a look at a, uh, an even simpler project, which is using something like the harmonica to improve chronic lung disease, all delivered virtually, remotely. And that requires uh, the right technology in order to allow for that interactivity to be optimised. Um, we've also got some other technique, other projects going on in the world of neurorehabilitation, stroke rehabilitation specifically, uh, working with SMEs to look at how uh, uh, rehabilitation of upper arm activity following a stroke can be improved by using. Oops, I don't know who that is, <laughs> but improving um, using games technology. And um, there's a particular tech which uses a rotating ball that allows the move the the person recovering from a stroke to initiate some um, very simple arm exercises and using games technology uh, to interact back with the patient and improve their upper arm rehabilitation following stroke. Um, so there's a variety of projects that we're interested in all of which have technology at their core or, um, and being applied to health. But we're very interested as well in looking at data and how we can best use health data to understand what's going on, uh, particularly in the community, particularly in primary care, which, as we know, uh, is having a bit of a hard time at the moment. Um, and so there we have to be smarter in the ways in which we identify patients, for instance, at risk um, and bring them in to receive what we'd hope to be optimised treatment. Um, next slide. I think the only thing I would sort of add to that as well, Joy, is I think as a group, myself and Joy, we're both from different colleges. Yeah. And our, our challenge over the next uh, months and years, hopefully, is, is bringing those two communities together. So yeah. making this sort of research group very problem oriented and then being able to bring uh, together our healthcare academics, our engineers and our computer scientists to respond to some of these multidisciplinary and applied sort of research calls. Because we do get a lot of med tech or health mm -hmm. intervention companies coming to Brunel and it's, uh, and it's how we, we sort of respond to that. Yeah, it's very much about making people aware um, of a healthcare problems, healthcare questions, and B for the healthcare professionals, making them aware of the potential to interact um, with, for instance, AI machine learning, and also to bring in the SMEs too to interact with that community. So a big part of our job is going to be about creating the community. Yeah. So this slide is just an example of some projects which I think Joy's talked a, a little bit around this as well, and I'll just add a little bit about the the computing ones again and then hand over to you joy i suppose some example examples of the types of computing projects are uh, looking at particular sensor technology and bringing that data into sort of cloud platforms where you can synthesize sensor data with existing clinical data and pathway data to create some quite interesting predictive models We've 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 got a sort of strong simulation community uh, here at Brunel, and it's quite a diverse simulation community. So we've we've got projects where uh, we're looking at uh, large geographies, national and city-based geographies, and the bottom corner, the red picture, is is one that's looking at sort of COVID spread, uh, and it's an agent-based model that looks at people moving around physical spaces doing particular tasks. But in the in the top corner, in the, the sort of blue picture, it, it, this is looking at sort of a similar problem. Uh, but again, it's, it's using uh, modeling around airflow in particular building structures. So as you can see, you've got two uh, very different granularities and opportunities for mixing those those mm -hmm. types of things. And then when you think about bringing in some of the more practical clinical aspects and embedding that behavior into these models, we've got some opportunities in, in this area as well. 
Over to you, Joy. Um, and I think also we've got very strong Venn diagram type interactions with the other centres already. So um, with, with Ashley and the AI centre um, and uh, also the new exercise centre um, is looking quite exciting as well in terms of crossover. So I think there's a lot of common ground um, and also with Abdul as well and the imaging work. So um, I think it's going to be quite an interesting time ahead of us. Um, and we just need to make sure that we um, centre our community, literally in our centre, um, but uh, but be very open to cross-linking with the other centres. Yeah. No, I think the the opportunities, especially around things like the new AI lab, yeah, we've got a, a lot of technologies, and we can start to. I think that's grounding some of this work in in sort of practical problems where we we've got the the lab space to actually achieve them. I think. Yeah. It, is sort of really important for this. Uh, let me move on to the next slide. And I think this is our last last slide. Uh, and I thought uh, we thought in this one really just to talk a little bit about, you know, where where we could see our future collaboration work also uh, coming, especially, if, you know, we've got our internal intergroup sort of collaborations, but I think we're we're very interested in sort of uh, commercial research, you know, medtech, NHS problems that are coming into our space that are around AI, AR, VR, haptic, you know, being able to use these AI labs and some of the technologies within them. Uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, funded projects, you know, we're working with the AI group now on, on a, a particular problem space about supporting medtech companies uh, bringing in some of the AR, VR technology and AI. Uh, again, PhDs, you know, the lifeblood of any research center, it's sort of giving giving uh, PhD students a home and support to then develop in, in these, these areas. I think the last two collaboration areas are quite interesting as well. We, I think, uh, our undergrads and our master students be able to house some summer projects, uh, ideally funded summer work where they can come and uh, work within the center to support some of these research projects. And then finally, uh, another sort of collaboration space as well as the more traditional research is being able to do technology assessments. So looking at what people are, are doing in an applied sense and advising on on how best to uh, carry out an experiment to get the, the health evidence to be able to demonstrate efficacy of some of these medtech and digital interventions. Joy, do you want to add anything to this one? Um, no, I think you said it actually. Um, yeah, we, we, are, we are brand new and uh, we're very much looking to collaborate um, across all of these areas. Yeah, and I think that's, that's our, our piece we're a bit uh, probably a bit under time so it may be an opportunity uh, to give Ashley I know Ashley has to leave early as well so rather than uh, if anybody's got any questions we're happy to answer those as well yeah just a quick one thanks very much Joy and David for this a quick one from me the work on rehabilitation which understandably was covered by the previous co-directors do you have any plans as to how um, this is going to continue, if at all? Yeah, no, it's going to continue as is. There's going to be no change at all from that. Um, the, the, the focus is on rehabilitation. Um, this is about um, smart technology for rehabilitation. So um, that is very much the central focus. Um, that rehabilitation you know, can cover many different areas, of course. It's... Um, uh, it might not just be as obvious as something like stroke rehabilitation, but it will be a health focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I Thanks. think some of our past work as well has, has shown the real need for this and the link yeah. uh, uh, that rehabilitation has on things like uh, A and E attendances. So if you haven't yeah. got those things in place, so I think our thinking is still there, and our future research projects are around there as well. Again, trying yeah. to link. Uh, NHS and council social care activities as well in some of our thinking. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, for instance, one of our projects that working on with Ashley um, is about um, looking at uh, asthma numbers in primary care. So a group of local GP practices have um, data on, on their asthmatics and what they're finding is that they're not identifying those who are in need of um, regular checkups you know, being pulled into the GP practice. Um, so they are they are very much interested in asking us to look at the data um, to so that we could mine that data and understand the data better and use some sort of intelligence um, on that data to better understand the behaviour and needs of their asthmatic populations. And, and that's it's a big population. They cover multiple practices across this area. Um, so that's just an example of um, the sort of diversity of the approach. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Any further questions to Star, David and Joy? We can't see any. All right. I think thanks very much, um, both of you, Joy and David. This is really some uh, exciting times ahead, I could tell, uh, with the new leadership and the vision. So um, looking forward to seeing that develop well. Um, now it's off to Ashley and Tatiana, the Centre for AI. Thanks, Abdul. Thanks, David and Joy um, for getting us started. Um, uh, if I may start and then uh, hand over to Tatiana. Um, <clears throat> we haven't, um, David, if you wouldn't mind, you, you can stop sharing your screen. Uh, uh, thanks. Uh, uh, we, we haven't prepared a, a, a slide deck, but uh, in part because, uh, quite frankly, we, we, we've been uh, up to our eyeballs and kind of getting on with stuff. Um, so just a quick overview, because I think a number of you will have uh, will be familiar with some of the things that we're doing, but a very quick overview in terms of some of the, the activities that we've been doing and, and some of the, the kind of uh, trajectory of travel. Um, so David mentioned the AI lab. I think it's fair to say Tatiana and I were there from the, the, the uh, inception of the idea of creating this lab um, and going through the, the machinations is only uh, uh, we can kind of create them internally uh, for getting the, the space, which we now have. Um, uh, Tatiana led a really successful uh, session uh, at the, to, uh, the beginning of um, the, the research festival uh, in the lab uh, with some of the equipment that's there. Um, it's currently under renovation and we're looking for the kind of official launch uh, somewhere in the summer uh, in, of, of 22. So, so in, a, in the next few weeks time. Um, so in addition to the lab, uh, we have grown uh, our membership. I think we've got somewhere in the region of 20, 25 members. We meet regularly on a fortnightly basis. Uh, so if you've got nothing else to do on a Wednesday afternoon, usually between 1.30 and 3.30, you're more than welcome to come and join our conversation uh, where we have discuss um, uh, projects that members are up to, uh, bids that are being made. Uh, we talk about articles, special issues that are being done um, and and a whole range of, of activities that are that are going on. Uh, I think it's fair to say we're, we're a fairly active uh, centre. Um, some specific projects, uh, Abdul, you mentioned uh, you know, the the uh, rehab project that started with uh, Marco and Dido, David and Joy's predecessors. Um, I introduced a company called Isansis, um, and together with Tatiana and Marco and and Dido, we 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 started a, a healthcare ecosystem uh which you know is we, we're now looking to progress with with joy and and with david uh with isensis who have uh, given us some of their kit um we've actually used that kit to gather data and uh, some of that uh, data is now being analyzed and and uh, we're looking to expand that that uh, relationship with with isensis um we're also um, working with our students at a number of different levels. So we have doctoral students who are involved in in bringing their research and their research expertise um, to the the topics of the of the center. Um, I launched uh, an MSc in AI strategy, which sits alongside the computer science 
MSc in AI. So the computer science MSc in AI is, is more technical, as you would imagine, whereas the MSc in AI strategy is much more related to what does all this technology mean uh, in, in a business? What does it mean from a business perspective? So we cover a range of, of topics, everything from um, strategy, the technology itself, um, the legal regulatory aspects, ethical power inclusion aspects, uh, leadership and management business models. So, so it's, it's all of those topics. And, and it sits cheek by jowl with the Center for AI, because it's really important that we we take the research that's going on in the center and give it an outlet uh, from a teaching perspective. Because you hear about uh, you know uh, research led teaching and research inspired teaching, we're actually putting that into practice because members who are in the center um, are actually taking their research and bringing it to students. Students are also encouraged to work with center members in terms of their dissertation topics um, and also in terms of um, uh, a particular uh, assessment method that we're using called Praxis, where we put our students uh, into organizations who are uh, uh, addressing various AI challenges and, and use the tools and techniques that they've learned to um, to to uh, inform uh, practice in these organizations. Uh, I'll mention one one last thing, and that is on the fifth. Uh, sorry, tell a lie. On the twelfth of July, uh, twenty twenty two, uh, we are uh, hosting a very significant um, uh, AI symposium in central London at Woburn House. Uh, details are on the on the net. Uh, it would be great if um, Roy, if you wouldn't mind putting a link to the AI symposium here in the chat, that would be really helpful. Um, uh, it would be really great if you could use your contacts uh, to to bring them into the center. Uh, sorry, into the symposium. Uh, the idea is to bring practitioners into talking to practitioners. Um, uh, we've also, for the first time, I think, set up uh, what we're calling expert sessions where at least 10, possibly 12 members of the center will be doing one to one kind of consultations with companies who attend again as part of uh, outreach and building uh, deeper relationships with with companies. Uh, speakers include uh, Rolls Royce, uh, Lord Tim Clement Jones, who's the co-chair of the all-party parliamentary group for AI. Um, we've got Tetra Pak, Expedia, uh, a whole range of, of, of speakers uh, coming uh, to talk on the day. Uh, please do uh, join us if you can. Uh, a quick whistle, whistle stop uh, about the center, uh, but I'll I'll hand over to Tatiana, who will no doubt will give you uh, a much better idea as to what we're doing. Tatiana. Uh, thank you very much, Ashley, for summarizing quite well uh, most of our activities. In the last year, we have secured quite a number of grants. Grants where we are covering very wide uh, uh, areas. We I think we are very much unique research center in comparison with others because we are basically covering uh, our membership is from all three colleges and institutions. So we have uh, academics from law, from economics, from business, from engineering. So we have very unique um, mix of people who are looking on AI from completely different perspectives. Uh, as a result, we are basically a lot of us learning to understand each other's perspectives from AI and a lot of activities uh, going towards on um, how to start to blend together and uh, work, work on multidisciplinary projects. In uh, relation to this, we have done quite few, we have secured a number of projects on um, uh, funding on building and running industrial scale uh, power motor rotor project on monitoring and prediction of faults. 
So uh, this is very much technical projects and we have very strong collaboration with company uh, which covers quite a lot of activities. We should say, and I think if anyone else has noticed, but I have noticed COVID has had effect on all of us. And um, a, a lot of online events which we have run previously uh, didn't provide as strong effect and impact as it would be face to face. We just started to launch face to face meetings. And uh, these meetings has been done with uh, launch of AI lab. Uh, demos. So we have already run two demos on AI H Lab as part of research festival in Brunel. So one of activities it was we were trying to attract uh, companies from construction area and we were running sessions on AI in construction and demonstrating our experience in this area. I should say that uh, I received a lot of very much positive feedback. Uh, every single company who has came at during this meeting has contacted us by now and we are already in process of running NDA. So it means we have a lot of potential with launching this uh, lab to provide more, uh, to get more of projects up and running. And obviously once we run uh, our a lab will be out of constructions and we will put everything together. Everyone will be welcome to come and have a look. Um, we have some more ideas uh, to run AI lab demos on a regular basis to industry. And uh, this will be our strategy inside of a center to secure further fundings, which will be provided with direct and in indirect support of industry for completion of our research projects. Uh, Anyone who has been uh, on all these events should see how lively it was and how many questions it was raising all our demos which were run and managed to put revive and back. Any questions? Well, yeah, I've got some. Uh, well, what not some, just one question. Well, thanks very much, both of you, Tatiana and Ashley. Really uh, interesting um, coverage of the center activities. My question is really related to your um, maybe vision and plans with regards to AI health. I know throughout the academic year there has been some plans and discussions around it. Maybe this has materialized, but I'm not really aware of the progress. So can you tell us what your plans are with regards to AI health? Uh, we are working very closely with Tahr uh, Center. So we're basically uh, AI uh, health ecosystem is gradually uh, building up and uh, there are some uh, ideas to apply for some large grant project proposal with some companies. And I think by now, uh, David, you could confirm that the scope of a project has been more or less familiarized and where we can try, we are trying to capitalize on the maximum expertise we have across two centers. So I'm speaking about, if we are speaking about AI health, it will be primarily very close collaboration between AI center and Stachr. And uh, this is okay. where we can start to capitalize and uh, look on different areas. So we are not looking Remember that AI Center, we have wider scopes and health, but uh, one of our vision and strategic developments is AI health, but it's only one of our directions. We need to make sure we capitalize on experiences and uh, knowledge of all our members, and this is what we are trying to do. W would there be specific um, lab resources for AI health part of your activity? We already have some resources, lab resources on AI health uh, facilities. Some of equipment has been bought mm -hmm. and uh, put in line. So uh, I'm sure that once some projects start to come out, so we'll be able to use uh, mm -hmm. some of the equipment related to AI health. But I can tell you that it's resources which we bought primarily at the beginning as AI health. Uh, bringing the companies in, we start to have some ideas how to use it in completely different sectors as well. So I would believe that we would capitalize not only in direction of AI health, but we'll be capitalizing on our core expertise of AI across the sectors. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Further questions to Tiana? I see um, Ashley is out of the room now. Any any more questions to Tiana? No, I can't see any. I'm happy okay. to welcome everyone in the AI lab. 
once we will set up, the idea is that we will run, uh, we will set up quite a lot of demos and will be live demos. So it means everyone who is uh, would like to visit and come, we will have uh, demos which we can uh, show on fly. Uh, we have quite a lot of interest now currently in uh, industries coming in and see our lab. So we need to put this on hold at the moment. And uh, following our AI in construction event, we have mm -hmm. companies who have already booked uh, get their teams coming to us to see our team and working as a team collaboration together to provide uh, uh, core events and projects. So basically we have quite a lot coming in and uh, start to capitalize on what we have just developed with uh, this launch event during research festivals on AI Lab. And we will continue this. There are some ideas and we spoke with Bal from RSDO that uh, the events and demos will have so much success that we will be running this on a regular basis, uh, attracting industries, completely different areas of industries. So not only like, for, for example, construction and so on. So basically we'll be concentrating on sort of show days for AI labs uh, that we can demonstrate our research capacities and new projects that are coming in. And I would say, Thank you very much for all members of our AI Center. We were very much quick, proactive, responding very quickly. Uh, we generated a lot of marketing material, which we are planning to publicize. In order to get Center successful, we need to develop our people and we need to value our people. And I'm sure that we'll be able to get to the next stage of developing potential projects. Yeah. I, I can also vouch for that, actually, Tatiana, the work that you're doing um, with the PhDs, but also with the MNG teams is, is great. I've seen some of their project activity in, in the uh, digital construction event and the launch event of the lab. Um, you, can, you can really feel the applied nature of the AI work that you're doing, and this is, this is really very good. It brings it closer to the real world. That's we, we are based, we, we combine in both. We are not using only apply area, we are using theoretical and apply basis. Mm. And um, because we are working on two areas, we are basically covering all challenges, not only in academic world, but also industrial world. And this is what makes us success. We are basically bridging the work in between. Yeah. And in the, this is what it makes us more attractive to companies. Sure. Tatiana, I know Ash is left, but there's one message in the text box uh, addressed to him. So you may want to pick up on it at the later stage um, from Shobana. Any further comments or questions to Tatiana before we say final thank you? No? Continue. Yes, Shobana, we, uh, I will get in touch with you and I will make sure that uh, Ashley will get in touch with you definitely. And uh, we are very much welcome to have a look and work in our area because I would say that in our center, the law side of AI is very active. We have a lot of publicity and consultation coming up. Remember that our center is a bit unusual because we are a bridge of social and engineering sides. So our impact is not only research grants, our impact is also de development of regulations, standardization, consultations from uh, social sciences. And uh, we are building quite a lot on this at the moment. Yeah. I think there is a raised hand from Shubana. Do you want to come yeah. in, Shubana? Or? Hi. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, hi, hi. Thank you very much for this. No, because uh, it's one of these things that I've been actively trying to see whether we can actually join in the law school as well. Uh, yes. Of course, I'm alumni on this. And yes, I know we well, there are a lot of policies coming up, but I think also importantly as well, there is the concerns about uh, the intellectual property related to AI. All right, and the patenting of it. We've seen this surge of patents being provided in AI, uh, you know, to protect the in innovation, etc. And I think it's things like this. I think we need to have a active dialogue in this area to keep it going. So I'm happy to join in where I can in any of this. I mean, I'm doing a lot. I'm keeping an um, eye out on, of it on the legal sector because I'm uh, the wise co-chair for the Legal Services Committee of the Bar Council of England and Wales. So, I, you know, that actively puts me into kind of working groups with the Centre of Data Ethics and Innovation and, all, of course, you know, like the Civil Justice Council on <laughs> the idea of how to create uh, uh, about how to deal with access to justice, etc. But, of course, this applies to all kind of areas. So if you need any kind of assistance from me, do get in touch. 
we can have two dialogues. Shubhana, you are very much welcome to join our center because we have quite a lot of conversations going on in this area. And I'm sure that we we'll can find the ways how we can collaborate together. From my perspective, I can tell you, even though that I am from uh, engineering side, uh, we start more, more and more we started to plug in some social science issues inside of development of AI based systems, and we integrate with not only in uh, design and implementation, but also we integrate with uh, during the modifications of actual design process on intelligent systems. So we are covering now a lot of social science elements uh, while working with uh, with companies before even looking on potential use of AI in their products. And uh, I think this is basically strengthen our position and helps us to understand all these issues thanks to our very unusual formation, formations of members of the team. Thank you. You are very much welcome. Please drop me an email and uh, we will organize everything and welcome you very much in our center. Excellent. Well, thanks very much to Tiana again for sharing thanks, the yeah. vision of the centre and telling us about your activities going forward. Um, now, I think I, I see Morad is available, the Centre for Digital Manufacturing or Digital Manufacturing Centre. So Morad, Morad, do you want to take the, the floor? Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Morad. I'm a Dr. Ali Musavi's assistant in Digital uh, Manufacturing Center, we call it DMC. And uh, sorry, he's, he was absent on the uh, in, uh, project in, <clears throat> in, um, in Portugal. So I'm just presenting on behalf um, on his behalf about the digital manufacturing. Uh, uh, this this uh, digital center is uh, almost um, new. Uh, we established this, um, this center last summer. So, um, the mission of the Digital Manufacturing Center is uh, to be recognized uh, as a world class uh, center for design, uh, for science and technology of the digital manufacturing and industry four. And uh, we are going to assist the researcher and uh, research activities in Brunel and also ex external uh, well, external customer. To um, to, uh, to access to the best possible solution for, uh, supported from the our um, very well trained and the professional academic and, uh, and technical staff. What we do in Digital Manufacturing Center, we have a two main objective, uh, which is the digital transformation of the manufacturing to industry four. And the, the, this is the one of the major problem we face in the um, the last few years, uh, decades also decade of the um, digital well transformation and smartification of the uh, well industry. One of the main uh, problem and the concern is the detection and uh, also data acquisitions because the the old uh, manufacturing and uh, most of the uh, manufacturing and um, plants are uh, old also is not uh, is not digital to to gather and collect the data easily so uh, this is the what we are working on this to do, to build a very strong data acquisition uh, platform to to reach the um, the modern and also old uh, machines also, uh, we are working on the data interpretation and the machine learning. How to we we gonna digitalize and how we interpreted this data and also about the modeling and the simulation of material machines and process and build the digital twins for the for the process. Um, also, we are working on the design, science, and technology of the uh, digital manufacturing. We have a very strong R and D driven solutions and. Uh, we are um, remove the burden and the cost of the computational and external uh, expert knowledge. We our objective is to provide uh, economic scale of uh, um, automation, and um, also we are uh, offering uh, AI uh, predictive manu predictive manufacturing, zero waste about the additive manufacturing and the 4D printing, because we have a very uh, strong co uh, collaboration with the design team. Uh, this is the, the just the brief of the, our uh, um, completed and also ongoing uh, projects, which is the, we have um, uh, almost uh, the 15 in the last few years. We had a 15 uh, very uh, very big projects, Horizon mainly Horizon 2020 in Europe and uh, also the UK based projects, and uh, some of them has completed uh, recently completed, and uh, there is also ongoing projects. 
we are working uh, as as example uh, Z factor, which uh, I was involved with. I was involved in this project and is the one of the our uh, early project we started in 2017. And uh, this was is about the, how we can um, f uh, the bring the the production line to a zero defect uh, and uh, find the detect the uh, defect and also predictive uh, predict and the prevention of the defect in manufacturing. How are we gonna build the uh, uh, optimal cost? And how are we gonna do the scheduling for the the product for production line and also how we gonna translate the, the information we we received from the uh, production line to the meaningful information through the uh, the K, different KPIs and uh, then translate all to the a meaningful cost. <clears throat> Another project we we were working on the Z break, uh, which is the uh, about the zero unexpected breakdown on the machines. This was also three years of project on the Horizon 20, uh, which we work on the um, this project and also iconic is the is about the electro uh, electro uh, photonic industry. How we gonna maximum uh, recyclability and uh, how we can uh, uh, adjustable platform for the high precision production systems. These are uh, the, these these two projects is recently completed. Uh, our center has also very high collaboration with the uh, uh, Tatiana and the AI center is about the AppWorks project, which is about the security and the provenance uh, program. Also, we work on the and the Histed project and the COM, which mainly they, they work on the detection and the classification of the tamper electronic device for the uh, airport uh, security systems. So we were uh, trying to reduce the waiting time for the passenger and also increase the productivity and efficiency of the security of systems. And the, all this, these two projects is about the quality and provenance, and we have a very strong uh, team on the image processing. And uh, we use the different machine, and this is the X-ray machines we we rented uh, to for the, this project. Also, uh, we have a very strong collaboration with uh, the water team, uh, which the professor Evina uh, and um, and her team. Uh, we try to uh, in the few projects like Deep Purple Hydro, so and uh, and other projects, we are working strongly with this team to smartification of the uh, the water plants and also. Uh, bring the efficiency to the uh, network of the plant and uh, transform the water industry to industry uh, for compliance. That means the digitalization of the water uh, plat, uh, plants and the build the circularity of the circularity e e economy of the uh, the water and the wastewater, and uh, uh, also about the. Uh, community involvement and uh, the, these two two projects, for example, that in Deep Purple project, Deep Purple project, we are working strongly to build this uh, DSS decision systems for the the water industry and uh, also on the smartification and uh, how we can translate to the uh, again the, the KPIs, key performance indicator in the water industry, wastewater industry. And uh, another project which is uh, I'm working on the, on it is the hydro, so which is the how we can uh, we try to um, um, well to change the the salty water uh, to the to use it as, as for the for the irrigation and for the byproduct of the uh, of the water and uh, Mediterranean area. And this project is mainly in Spain and Greece. OK, about the, the uh, as I said, this is the uh, our uh, DMC uh, age is, is less than a year. We are still on process of the purchasing stuff and also we are a, a digital manufacturing center with the different uh, robots, different additive manufacturing is like uh, we, we have a two um, uh, big uh, 3D printing uh, printers and also we have a micro and uh, micro uh, scanner. We have a normal scanner. We have a different strong uh, in, in, in structure for the uh, the big data analyzing and machine learning uh, machine learning purpose. We have a control stuff like a PLC, like a SCADA, and the different robots for the building the for the simulation of the manufacturing and also uh, prototyping the uh, our products. This is the our capability in different. Uh, as I said, uh, we we are capable of the giving the 
uh, the, the building the programming, the PLCs, CADA, and uh, working with AI machines and also the different things in their digital twins, robots, and uh, also running the AI and machine learning, uh, machine learning uh, algorithms. And recently we have started to gather all of the projects uh, all together and just uh, uh, we, we, uh, the project name is Z Prime, which is the how we try to uh, gather all of the res uh, recent uh, my five, six years research um, and also probably Ali's uh, last 30 years uh, experience in, in a one solution. In the, this solution, we try to build this uh, framework of the uh, uh, this uh, DAC, which is the we, we try to um, bring the all of the, um, as I said, this is the one of the major challenges how we connect to the different machines, PLCs, uh, which they are sometimes they are old, sometimes they are new, but how we uh, try to uh, build the protocol to read these old machine data together, collect them in the database, how we process them, how we gonna. Uh, build the AI solution applications and then try to um, to present uh, as a web client um, for the, the uh, users. This is our roadmap for the Z Prime and uh, a strategy for the Z Prime is, as I said, uh, we have um, it, it is starting from the bottom, from the machines, from the raw data, uh, reading uh, reading this data from the that could be from the manufacturing machines, could be from the database and collect them and they work on this to build the uh, optimization cost, also predictive um, predictive purpose. It could be about the uh, zero defect and the zero downtime of the manufacturing sector uh, and uh, any other uh, purpose we have. We work on the previous project and uh, also build the digital twin for this purpose. This is an example we had uh, because I'm not available for this afternoon. Just a quick uh, explanation that this is the example we use for predictive of the failure and the defect in the one of our uh, use case, which we were reading uh, through the machines and the production line and to try to predict the different breakdown of the uh, in, during the uh, machine, during the process and the production. And this was for the another um, another one, which is the which again we try to we have a different uh, likelihood of the defect, and uh, we try to based on reading the from the machine, from the process, and the different uh, data source, we try to predict the half likelihood is the, is the uh, happening of this a defect and uh, a failure uh, in the machine or in the in the production line. Uh, this is a, a short of the, the what we do in the in this center, and also we have uh, unfortunately Ali is not here. He's, he could be he could this, uh, present um, uh, the big aim of and uh, objective of the this center uh, himself. If if there is any question regarding to the DMC and uh, what we do and uh, what's our collaboration, and uh, I'm happy to uh, answer. Thank you, Morad. Is that the end? Yes. OK, fantastic. Wow, what what a broad scope of uh, the center. Yes, yes, we are we are working on the three different area is is, is, is in the manufacturing is the uh, bringing AI and machine learning to manufacturing and also uh, in the uh, well, image processing, as I said, in the in the security area and also in the water industry, which is we try to smart smartify smartification of the um, and, and digitalization of the uh, uh, water and the wastewater industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, one, one thing that could potentially be explored going forward is really to break the barriers of the center and maybe try to identify synergies with other centers because yeah. the work on AI, for instance, and image processing yes. is something that other centers are also doing. So yeah. by sometimes joining forces, you see that potentially more Good things could uh, could be achieved. Of course, of so. course. We we have a good collaboration with uh, Tatiana's team and the AI um, AI center, which is the in the a few project come and after Fox projects, uh, which is the very good projects. They won uh, as a, they they selected as as a best team in this project. So yeah, we are working with the different teams and uh, it's a very broad area we are because uh, it's about it is, machine yeah. learning. It's about I mean, AI which would respect the question actually. Um, do you do you do um, work on um, on sensors, sensor technologies? 
Um, not on directly on the sensors. We, we try to read through the sensors. We are uh, building a platform. Uh, we call it IDAC, which is the this is the uh, technology or this is the protocol to collect. Uh, well, this is the software and hardware. We are trying to uh, read through the sensors and the collected data and uh, just uh, um, to be a smart collector of the collect. Well, build a smart DAC to collect this data and, uh, and gather the data and put it inside. What the, type? What type of sensors do you work this with? Is the, mainly, this is the the well manufacturing data, which is reading through the different sensors, and it could be any any sensors through the industry we have. Okay. So, so yeah, things like uh, the, ultrasound, laser, LIDAR. laser. Yes, yes, laser should be about the, um, any machine sensors is reading from the uh, any um, any things in the in the in the in the plant on the plant. Okay. Yeah. I mean, what one of the ongoing projects in the institute is mm -hmm. looking at um, is looking at identifying flaws in industrial settings, manufacturing settings right. um, in. For instance, the um, manufacturing uh, uh, environment, you may have some big heavy duty machinery mm -hmm. which needs to be uh, monitored on a permanent basis to right. identify flaws, flaws not just in structure, but flaws in operation as well, mm -hmm. operational flaws. So yeah. to do that, we, we, we are using sensors, but also fusion, fusion of sensor modalities as I yeah. described in my presentation earlier on. So is that something you, yeah, yeah, we are, we are. We are working. Yeah, we work uh, that one on the our a few of project which we we collected how we fuse uh, these data together mm -hmm. and also. But uh, as I said in the Z Prime project, we have a very professional. We recruit a professional um, a researcher which we're working on this. How we 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 uh, try to because when we you're reading from the different machines and the different platforms and the. How we kind of synchronize this data? How we can smartify this data collection um, platform? And this is the what we're already working on it. Yeah, yeah. I think in industrial settings, precision is very important, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It you is, want yeah. your accuracy to be to be submit accuracy and uh, synchronizing this data together because we have a, we have we will have a timestamp for because this is the main important the, when you're reading through this. Uh, the different um, different source they are very highly uh, correlated together, and you need to to just to correlate this data together. And uh, yeah. or for example, how often you want to read this data? We we try to smartify this and uh, automate this this one. How often you're gonna read this? How what's the frequency of the data sampling you yeah. you, you're gonna do it on the uh, on the analog uh, sensors? Yeah, I'll I'll talk to you about it offline yeah. maybe after the meeting. That's a very yeah, interesting area. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. It is yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any questions to Murad from the floor? No, I can't see any raised hands. No comments or questions, observations to Morad. No, you're satisfied. I right, take yeah, this as a positive uh, thing. Thanks, Morad, very Thank much. You. Thank you, Abdul. Thanks very much. Um, John, John Cosmas, I see you are in the room. So it's the time for the Ideas Research Center to tell us about their projects, um, work, and of course their plans. Okay. Can you see my slide? Yes, yes. OK, okay. so uh, welcome to the Ideas Research Centre. This is uh, like a brief overview of live research projects and activities. Uh, the objective of the centre is uh, to research into intelligent digital economy and society using AI data analytics, 6G media, human machine interaction digital games, augmented and virtual reality, digital twins, IOTs, cybersecurity, data and information fusion, etc., providing legal and, um, and regulatory compliance solutions and all aspects of GovTech to promote social unity and enhance economic impact. So the we were working on in the oops, sorry, we're working on innovative data technologies in all aspects of the data chain, innovative mobile and fixed network technologies, augmented virtual reality systems, oops, and um, tactile internet, trust identity, privacy and security uh, measures, and secure digital e economic 
societies. Um, the uh, these are the members. Um, as of last count, uh, includes people from engineering, um, includes people from design um, and, uh, and, and computer science, as well as uh, one member from um, business school. And um, this is the first um, project that I want to present. This is uh, our activity uh, in the, um, the culmination of all our activities in the EU Horizon 2020 project, Internet of Radio Light, <coughs> where we uh, we won a £700,000 grant to to look at a visible light communication system with a millimeter wave. Uh, and here you can see us in the um, in the uh, um, building research establishment testing testing it, its performance. <coughs> um, here's a closer view. This is the illumination LEDs here. Here are the communication LEDs, and here's the millimeter wave antenna. All this was built in the project, <coughs> and uh, we were measuring coverage areas, and uh, we pre presented a paper on it uh, in uh, IEEE Transactions, and we won an ITU Best Paper Prize. Um, and our co-winner was a company from Elon Musk. Um, so we were in, we were in good company. Um, from that, um, a researcher analysed the Lambertium emission from the LEDs. Uh, it wasn't um, um, very Lambertian, and this introduced errors. And so he he analysed it and he worked out uh, to what extent it wasn't a Lambertian. Uh, he made corrections to it, um, and then uh, uh, repredicted the uh, positioning the positioning um uh of the of the of the receiver based on uh, received signal strength uh, and the uh, adapted lambertian um uh, profile and uh, we got uh, more accurate lo and behold we got more accurate location errors um the uh this is this led us to to start building um uh, 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 an IoT lab in, in the uh, computer in the computer lab in Taubi 206, and uh, this consists of ten Raspberry Pis um, connected to uh, wireless LAN, and uh, on which students have been creating projects to to capture data. Um, and transmit to other Raspberry Pis via the wireless LAN. Uh, and then once that's been checked and worked out, to, um, we have a like um, a uh, a work um, path, path, a work path to take. Uh, this is all in Linux to take the Linux um, Python program uh, that's uh, located on the second the second Raspberry Pi and place it onto our own private uh, multi-access edge computing cloud, uh, which allows us to create a Linux environment to to access, so that we can access the uh, the program, the remote program, uh, the the local program uh, via the cloud, and the remote device is uh, is on on the mobile device. The plan uh, is to um, is to um, uh, have a parallel radio access network that's uh, 6G, 5G radio access network. So that you can see here the 5G links. Uh, this will allow us to get um, location accuracy to one centimeter uh, throughputs up to 20 gigabit per second and latencies uh, as low as one millisecond. Yeah, and here you can see um, uh, uh, the student project uh, for streaming a video, <coughs> a high high definition video, oh, high definition video, high definition video between. Oh, oh, I won't play it uh, between Raspberry Pis, and here you can see the 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 platform for the um, OpenStack uh, multi asset edge pack cloud computing uh, server. There you go. So that's done there. 
Uh, in that's in the computer lab, so we're going, we're calling it the wireless computer communications lab. So it's it's enhancing it somehow. Um, that's in tower B. In tower C, we have the 5G lab, and here it is. What we did was we took all this equipment um, from the that that we had from the building research establishment. I can I can sure uh, you can remember that. We broke it all down and we built it up in this 5G lab. In the 5G lab, you can see here the same transmitters, and we put we put a um, we put a uh, um, flatbed potter here so that we can automate the um, the measuring of position uh, to one centimeter accuracy. So the measuring a position of one centimeter accuracy is an Israeli company called Raniel um, measuring um, delay to 30 picoseconds, which equates to one centimeter accuracy. Um, we're initially going to be generating the, the pseudo random noise sequence um, from the transmitter uh, and pretending it's, it's the, the user equipment and then measure the, the delays um, to each of the um, four receivers on the radio access network. And then the, these delays then get reported onto a database, which then measure the, uh, which then estimates the position of the user equipment to, to one centimeter. Here you can see Ben in the lab um, uh, controlling the position of the, of the uh, t test antenna. <laughs> Um, um, with a voice, a remote voice command. So, you, you know, you just uh, speak what you, where you want it to be and it goes there, something like that. <laughs> okay, so this is a, a project related to um, predicting the, uh, uh, um, pre the direction of the, of a, be of a beam, um, of a, a beam steering antenna in, in the right direction. So what happens here is we have isotropic transmission transmission from the um, from the rec rece receiving antenna that's that's transmitted in all directions. This is then analyzed. This is then then analyzed uh, and uh, taught t teaches a, uh, a, a, a a neural network. Uh, what is the um, what is the the impulse response waveform, which is a type of signature of where the device is in its environment. And it uses that to work out where is the best um, where direction to steer the antenna. Um, um, and then if the uh, if that if that a path is blocked um, uh, for one reason or another, uh, then it uh, also uh, works out a secondary uh, propagation uh, paths um, in order to get to to the uh, receiving antenna. We've done this uh, on a on a map of um, on a 3D map of uh, Hong Kong. Uh, we've now got uh, uh, and we've written a paper on it. <laughs> and we now got uh, a uh, uh, a 3D map of a factory a Bosch factory which we're going to re repeat the experiment um, within the box Bosch factory. So that was always the case. Uh, once the once the, um, the the direction of the beam is established to, from the transmitter to the receiver, re reinforcement learning is used to optimize the um, uh, the the position of the of the beam towards the antenna uh, uh, to maximize the um, throughput. Uh, so that's, uh, there's another project here. So so that's all this is uh, within um, the 6G Brains project, which is a uh, another EU project with a £500,000 um, budget for, for Brunel, and the IRL project, which was uh, uh, shown here, was the original uh, EU project with the 700000 funding. From from Brunel, uh, for Brunel. So apparently, um, uh, Panos has won an EK UKRIEPSRC project 
It explores the feasibility of a distributed ledger technology enabled the central bank digital currency for tax collection. Personally, I do not know much about it, but I want to represent everybody in the research centre. Um, if he was here, he'd be able to wax lyrical on it. Um, it addresses HMRC annual 10 billion tax deficit. Um, the um, money tax, the, the making tax smart is an in, in impact acceleration and assessment process with HMRC pay and to commercial banks. It's, it's, it's a collaborative project. So I don't know what the size of the fund of that is, but just thought I'd uh, show you another activity within the project. Project uh, um, Research Centre. There's also like a, he he has another project called Human Like Computing um, Centre. Uh, uh, it's a UK RI EPSRC project, and Human Like Computing involves endowing machines with human-like perception, reasoning, and learning abilities in order to cope with surprise and adverse si situations. He's got this this project related to that. I, I, personally, I don't know much about it. If he was here, I'm, I would have handed it over to him to explain more of it. This is the the explanation he provided for, and and I'm reporting to you that that's what's going on. We also have Isabella Mancini from the I think she's from the business business school, and she's interested in and and performing her own personal research on digitization. Um, related to uh, fo fostering human labour rights in the post-Brexit uh, Britain. This project investigates the nexus between digital trades and workers' rights as the UK enters into trade agreement with some of the richest economies in the world. I'm sure it's a very interesting subject that uh, would, would attract a lot of interest from the good and the great. <laughs> so there's that one. Then there is another project here, uh, Hong Ying Meng, uh, his um, spiking sparse distributed memory model for implementing. Uh, this investigates a chip uh, for sparse distributed memory model for data storage. So he's, they're building a chip that can uh, store data and, ac and access data quickly. Um, new, and it's a neuromorphic chip and, and, and does all these different things. And so this is, here is another activity within the research center. Then um, we got funded for some medical equipment of which Costas Spinitzis asked for a Trigno Avanti sensor. This looks at the the muscle, the muscle, uh, if you like, activity and stuff like that. And uh, and he's used that successfully. And so I thought I'd, it'd be nice to present something like this because it shows a direct uh, link between um, seed, seed funding and result. And Costas has been very good uh, regards to quickly getting this, um, uh, if you like, applied and uh, going through a like a like a test. Um, a test uh, assessment in Ghana with his Ghani, Ghanaian student, somebody called A. Bawa. So that's all I know. Uh, this is to detect the gait and normality among patients and proposes exercise for rehabilitation to improve the general well being of being of people with a disease and related muscular disorders. So well done to Costas for applying that bit of feet seed funding. Come along here. Uh, uh, here's a, another project here. Um, uh, I don't know if you know, but Hamid is one of our prolific uh, researchers in 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 electronic and electrical engineering. He, he and he regularly attracts the interest of many um, uh, uh, Iraqi students coming here to do their PhD from the different ministries. And um, he, and here's a very interesting project which I thought would be interesting because it somehow affects it affects me so when you when you uh install a, equipment <laughs> you often have um, log files that tell you what had gone wrong when trying to install it so this this is um he's using ai that looks at these log files to work out what's going on and to to recommend a um a course of action in order to to um 
to, 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 to correct for that error. So that was really interesting, uh, particularly because uh, we had all sorts of problems uh, installing the OpenStack and multi-access edge cloud computing server. And we were spending hours and hours <laughs> staring at these log files trying to work out what they meant. Uh, and so uh, some AI machine, uh, something like that, uh, if, if they have uh, been provided with the log files to, to if you like, help you work out what's going on, um, that would that would be a really great um, addition to um, s systems engineering um, uh, computing infrastructure. Um, and here's another project from the Iraqi, I call it the Iraqi army. <laughs> uh, the PhD self-funded healthcare monitoring electrogram classification. So he uses a cl convolutional neural network at F on an FPGA. So that's why I, <clears throat> that's why I uh, found it quite interesting because it's not a, just a convolutional neural network. It's a convolutional neural network on an FPGA. So it goes really quick. So that's why I thought it'd be worthwhile highlighting this one because this is somehow uh, a, quite an attractive solution here that may be of int general interest to to people uh, from from that body of research. Um, and here is now another interesting, very interesting from again the an Iraqi army. <laughs> so sorry, my, my sense of humour. Um, and this is uh, like uh, this is uh, I chose this one from Hami because it's quite an interesting area because uh, there's a lot of talk about using um, uh, intelligent reflective surfaces for beam steering. So because these beams are directional and um, um, and, and and if you step in front of it, uh, if you like, uh, you lose the connection. It's not like isotropic transmissions, where if you uh, you get uh, you get uh, transmissions from all directions, so you never really lose a uh, connection. But with these directional antennas, uh, if you uh, step in front of the, the the main the beam, right, you you lose uh, you lose your connection, which is not a great idea. So you've got to create a somehow a a man-made multipath environment, and they are uh, because these are, uh, are beams are operating at very high frequencies. The reflectivity of of walls and on floors and stuff like that is not very good. So the idea is to create these, uh, if you like, intelligent reflective surfaces, uh, <laughs> which allow the beams to be to be steered um, around uh, obstructions, and uh, so. Uh, Hamid has got this really interesting project, which I thought was also worthwhile um, showing that shows to, to, to design these reflective surfaces to have different reflective properties. And I thought I thought that that's a, a really nice insight into what's happening next in the wireless field, because the, the wireless field is using higher and higher frequencies in order to get larger and larger bandwidths in order to improve um, greater and greater throughputs. But the the the, the benefit of uh, the, 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 the drawback of that is that there is um, not very good propagation properties. So they've had to create these beams. They've had to create these beams. And there are all sorts of challenges related to the opportunities and challenges related to these to these uh, very um, directional beams, um, and what some of the, the one of the challenges is its binary nature. You know, somebody slips in front of it, it gets blocked. So you need to think of a man-made multiplier. Uh, and one of its opportunities is using frequencies that are often used in radar. So it could also be used in radar. So there is a, like a little hint of where. Uh, a recent research proposal that I have uh, submitted um, is, is is related to it's related to communication and sensing uh, using the communication signal as a sensing signal as well in order to emulate lidar. And finally, I think this is the final. Oh no, this is another uh, project from Hamid, um, and this is relates to. Uh, 5G, um, and we have concluded that. Yeah, this is to this is to 
uh, this is to save power, I believe. A power and time delay saver approach that is uh, uses quantum entanglement to reduce the inher inherent signaling delay of the infrastructure to to access point protocol. Okay, so infrastructure to access point. This is what it interests me. The interest in infrastructure to access pro uh, pro point protocol. This is what interested me because uh, the this infrastructure is uh, what you might it's called by a different name, but further up it's the multi access edge cloud computing server and these the transmissions from that. So so this is uh, this is, has somehow direct re um, relevance to to me. He's trying to the protocol to interface between the devices and um, the user devices and this multi assets edge cloud computing server. He's trying to improve it. So that was quite also quite interesting to me. And then finally, yeah, an Internet of Things radio over fiber. This is a, a, a theme that Hamid has been working on for years and years, radio over fiber. Uh, this is quite interesting as well because this is also has an interest for me because the radio over fiber could be used in the backhaul network uh, in order to um, pre pre uh, encode the the radio transmission signals in 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 base in a in a in baseband and then use the radio over fiber to send them to the multi asset edge uh, to send them to the radio access networks in order to to make uh, the whole process uh, more efficient. So that was interesting to me as well. And that's, if you like, a little, uh, there are other projects. But Thank you, that, John. That's a cross section of them. No, <laughs> that that's, that's fine. It's my, good my, that we underran, we underran the previous sessions because yeah. you took your lion's share. Did I go on for a bit? Sorry about that. No, that's fine. We're still within the allocated time for that session anyway. Are you ready for questions? I can take any questions if uh, anybody's interested. If anybody in. wants to ask John a question, that's the golden opportunity to fire questions to him directly. What's what, what are the plans going forward for ideas? Well, uh, there is. Um, uh, OK, as, as you can see, we've got this lab, if you like, which is the receptacle of our uh, research. So th this this ran, this was built in the Internet of Radio Light project by this radio, uh, this Israeli company. The, it's an amazing little company. The guy who runs it is a serial entrepreneur. And uh, he, he um, g generated this ran, combined it with a, a, Meri, um, a Merisoft core and with like a normal, like a no, uh, not Nokia, but um, Samsung phones and stuff. And uh, it, it works <laughs> and they are uh, and uh, they are um, providing a system for an Israeli, uh, uh, an Israeli um, uh, sports center. Um, and um, and I am making a bid for uh, this system here in two proposals. The first proposal is related to the detection of improvised explosive devices using um, autonomous vehicles. Um, the, the, the point being that uh, because this thing can measure location to one centimeter accuracy, you need to know where these improvised explosive devices are accurately so that you can uh, you can if you like present them on the ground and nobody uh, like steps on them until an engineer comes along and diffuses them so the idea is um you know as i was looking through the um uh, the issues that uh, plague countries like syria uh, afghanistan uh, uh iraq and now you Ukraine, they they suffer. The people continue to suffer with um, you know uh, the 
if you like, the legacy of war, which are these improvised explosive devices and children and people get maimed and killed uh, by that. So um, it's actually a very laborious process to de um, uh, uh, to, to, to make a, a field or any uh, area um, cl clear of, of mines. So this is like a, an obvious thing that can be done. Mm -hmm. so, so this is the plan for that particular uh, track of work, but in, in general? For in general, the, uh, yeah, so the in general is communications and sensing. So I put, a, I, put, I put in a proposal related to communication and sensing for, um, for uh, you know the fundamental technologies um 6g it's a 6g type of project it's the fundamental pro pro with uh, with this israeli company and hopefully that will eventually end up in a product it, it always it always does with them and um and ev eventually that we will try to include in bring that into brunel mm -hmm. you, you see so this is this is a 5G network with uh, isotropic transmitting antennas, and then we will have a 5G network or a 6G network with um, beam steering uh, antennas. And hopefully uh, uh, we will uh, also have um, the re reflected signal coming back so that we can analyze the, uh, if you like, um, the, the LIDAR-like information yeah. that is being what's what what's the coverage of this um, system uh, as long as far as you can transmit your beam yeah uh, which is how 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 long how, 100 how meters max sorry max. could be 100 meters 100, 100 meters yeah could be it's it's, it's 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 as far as you can transmit this beam could be uh, as, probably it depends also on whether the environment is uh, is densely populated there are lots of obstacles buildings or it's just you know open space isn't it I think it's open to experimentation. Yeah. So. Okay. So that's, um, that's, that's fine. That's that. that's, um, sorry, we're running out of time there. We're about to close this session. Questions. And just one burning question or comment to John before we round off and close down the session. No. Okay. Well, thanks very much, John. Really exciting stuff from you, but also the other centers. Um, the day hasn't concluded yet. Uh, we are due to uh, see two very exciting keynotes over the lunch hour um, at starting at uh, 1.30, but then followed by the live demos from the lab from 3.30 onwards. If you're keen on seeing um, an award giving ceremony for open access, um, then um, you can go to um, you can go to that link with uh, Emma Norris uh, following that one, that session at 12 at 11.30. So thanks very much and see you over the lunch. And thank you everybody who, who decided to stay on for me because I yeah. got I had the graveyard shift. I mean the very last one. Thanks, John. Thanks everybody. Cheers. Bye-bye.